Um, we did a re- piece of research last year, which showed that about £300 billion of the UK pensions industry, so about a tenth of that £3 trillion figure, is linked to companies driving deforestation around the world. Deforestation, one of the biggest drivers of, of climate change and climate catastrophe. Um, and it's our money which is contributing to the companies driving deforestation. So there's a, a big chunk of money going towards deforestation. We did another piece of research this year, which showed that about £88 billion of the UK pension industry is going towards the fossil fuel oil and gas companies. Um, and that's to many companies who are not just currently developing oil and gas, but are expanding operations, who are rolling back on their climate targets, who are cutting their investments in renewable energies as well. So this isn't a nice idealistic vision where we're investing our money in companies which are transitioning and it's all going to be okay. We're actually investing in the companies which are going to be taking us way beyond 1.5 degrees. So it shows that lots of our money is currently going to these kind of investments. Just put on fossil fuels alone, it's about £3,000 per pension in the UK in the fossil fuel industry. And there's a gap in knowledge and awareness around this. But we've also done research which shows that if you take action on this agenda, if you move your money from a a default standard pension where most people find themselves to a more sustainable greener fund, that can cut your carbon footprint 21 times more than giving up flying, becoming a vegetarian and recycling combined. So we think there's a real... Whilst there's a a problem right now, there's also a huge opportunity if we as individuals and we collectively start putting pressure and making more proactive decisions about where that money goes, that we can have a really positive impact on the world around us. You know, we often look at our banks and think, you know, which one could give me the best rate and which has the best account. But really, we should start looking at our banks and thinking, you know, which ones are putting the most money into to industries that I'm not happy with and that are, you know, causing uh, the climate crisis. So I think, yeah, something that the people don't really think about much. And there's, yeah, rankings and research that Share Action does on this, but also lots of other organisations. It's a real growing trend. There's more and more visibility on sort of where your bank is putting uh, your money. Yeah, there's lots of ways that you can raise awareness of this. Firstly, people often don't know how much power they can actually have with their financial, uh, with with the power of finance. So first, like what, by owning just one share in a company, this actually gives you access to an extraordinary amount of power. You can actually attend a company's AGM, their annual general meeting, and ask a question directly to the board. So that's something that Share Action helps people do across a wide range of companies and a wide range of issues. You can go along to an AGM and really kind of ask the question um, and challenge the board on, on how the company is acting. And also it allows you to get involved in other things such as, you know, filing a shareholder resolution and putting a lot of pressure on a company to change their ways. Um, And really, I just say that, yeah, as people that care about ethical finance on on this call, you can really help spread the word by sharing interesting news articles and sharing reports that highlight the power of personal finance and show that people really care about how their money is used. And like an individual, most individuals are fairly uninformed about the links between money and climate change. That translates to organisations as well. We've done surveys which show that it, on the pension side of things, 95% of uh, FTSE 100 companies have got a sustainability plan. Just 5% of them mention pensions, despite the fact they're investing $20 billion every year through their company pensions into companies which are contradicting their sustainability plans. So if you can get your organization you work for or organizations within your society, organizations you partner with to be thinking about this, to be taking action, be that changing bank or at least lobbying their bank to change, then I think that impact can also be really significant. You know, for example, pension providers have a duty to give you information about where your money is going. And yet lots of people within the pensions pensions industry feel or say that customers aren't interested. They don't feel they are finding customer engagement a challenge. So even just a few customers sending emails to ask questions can indicate that customers and consumers do really care about the environmental impact of their investments 
And actually, some of the providers out there have really good tools um, on their websites and in their apps. Um, and so, for example, the Nest app, uh, the Nest website, you can in a few clicks see where your money is being invested. Um, that's not the case across the board, but actually even a few people trying to find the information and when they can't, asking questions is a really powerful way of demonstrating um, that that we as consumers really care about where our money is being invested. But unfortunately, the way we are at the world now is that if if everyone sort of if all the pension funds, if all the organisations completely divest at the moment, there's not enough scale in that that it would actually stop those companies getting the investment there's too many other companies there willing to provide investment and those ones aren't the ones that are then going to challenge those companies to change so that's why engagement can also be useful because it means that pension funds and and asset managers and and these organizations can really engage with a shell a bp and sort of say we want you to decarbonize faster we want you to change your business and focus on renewables and stop stop oil and gas expansion and that type of thing but the real problem with that is that what we're seeing across the industry at the moment is that that engagement is nowhere near strong enough so pension funds asset managers they're saying they're engaging oh we're you know we're speaking to shell we're trying to get them to change but what they're not doing is is having a strong enough escalation path and really going, we will give you one year to do X, Y, Z. If you do not do that, we will file a shareholder resolution or we will do a next step. And then the last step always has to be divestment. And like, if you do not take this action by this time, we will divest and like hopefully do that, you know, maybe uh, en masse, uh, which would have a, a bigger impact. What I would encourage everyone to think is that all investments are impact investments. All investments have an impact, be they good or bad. And trying to understand the kind of cumulative impact of where your money's going and the impact it's having can be really, really difficult. So it's hard to find out the top 20 ski, top 20 businesses your money's going to. It's hard to then understand the impact that's having. Um. So one of the things that Solar Options for Schools does, that's one of my hats, is we picked one particular little niche, yeah, schools, and we built a whole lot of software around making it as easy as possible to help a school get across the line. And we're working to use that software with community energy groups around the country. We're working with about half a dozen so far. They then use our tools to sort of fast track the process of identifying a suitable project and fast track getting that local school across the line in terms of, okay, we understand how this works. We understand how it's not going to cost us anything to have solar panels. We're going to pay for the electricity from the solar panels uh, at a lower rate than mains electricity. We're going to cut our carbon and solar options for schools will then come in and do education um, to inspire and educate our kids on energy and decarbonization. which is we also need to fund those projects. And that's the other hat. The Solar for Schools CBS is a not-for-profit community benefit society set up specifically for schools. Its members are the schools. Any profits that get built up or accumulated within that go back to the schools. And this is important for two reasons. One, these schools have to sign a 25-year agreement. That's really quite scary for them. But if they're signing that agreement with a community of other schools that they are part of the governance of, yeah, they can elect the directors of it. Um, that gives them some certain security. We then manage that from an operational point of view. We do all the invoicing, the billing, the monitoring, the reporting, and the education piece. Um, and where I'm heading with that one is that uh, the we've tried to make it as risk-free as possible to support and invest in a school. So rather than investing in a single school, you're investing in a pool of schools. Schools are relatively safe because they tend to pay their bills, they rarely go bust. They do shut down occasionally, yeah, and we factor that into our financial model. They do re-roof occasionally, we factor that into the financial model. But compared to putting solar panels on a warehouse, it's a pretty safe investment. Not guaranteed, but it's a pretty safe investment. And we've done enough of them to have a pretty good track record in that. Um, 
But the most valuable reason as to why you might want to invest uh, some of your money in um, a project on a school rather than any other building is the education piece. And the direct CO2 savings from putting solar panels on a school are, in my opinion, between one tenth and one hundredth of the total carbon impact or decarbonization impact because of the education. And our view is that most of our generation don't really know what they need to do. And I mean, this 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 session is a really good example. I've made a mental note of coming a new education module around how to persuade your parents to move their money from Barclays to Triodos or whatever. Um, but the 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 they have children care about the future. They're very scared about it, actually. Um, they have the time to learn about it. And they are the most powerful influences of their parents. We can't change our generation's behavior unless they want to, but our kids can. They just need to know what it is that they need to tell their parents. So that's one of the objectives that Solar for Schools has, and that's the main driver behind it. We want to provide energy and decarbonization education to every young person in the world. And given that most schools around the world are struggling to fund maths and basic literacy, using the sun to fund that education is a bit of a no-brainer. And that's where the real impact comes from. And I think there is a perception of the, the kind of ABCs of money, that money is abstract, boring, complex. And sometimes it is. But actually, when we focus on what our money could be doing and could be unlocking, you find that people are much more interested in the potential power that they have without even realizing it. Um, and I think there's a, a really big question that we look at, at at Money Movers, which is how do you go from people wanting to make greener choices to actually supporting them to do it? And I think lots of us have good intentions when it comes to climate action. You know, I think we're trying our best, but we have really busy lives. There are busy schedules and, and all sorts of things to be thinking about. And finding time to actually look at your money when it feels abstract, boring and complex can feel really hard. And so that's why at Money Movers, we, we have this um, model of peer support. So the idea that you can gather a group of people, it could be just two or three people, or it could be 10 people people from your neighborhood from your community from your workplace to discuss these topics and help keep you accountable and supported um, and I think what we found is that people find these sessions fun you know they have pensions and pizza evenings they find it interesting to actually go under the hood of what's actually happening with their money but I think a really crucial ingredient is that we have a coaching approach so in our Money Movers sessions, we don't have anyone being the expert, the teacher. No one's there lecturing or preaching at you. No one has all of the answers. The idea is that everybody is learning together and we all have the ability to spend 5, 10, 15 minutes Googling something. And as I said before, that kind of divide and conquer approach as to kind of really getting into the, the details of this is really powerful. And then the other piece of what we do is as part of the program, women host get stuff done sessions where you literally get together, carve out the time, make an intention at the beginning of, say, an hour and then spend 45 minutes either looking into switching your bank account or finding out what your pension company is doing or researching greenwashing. And then you come back at the end of that hour and share what you've learned. And what we find is Carving out the time together is so simple, but it's such a powerful catalyst for action. Um, and then the final thing I'd say is that if you don't have a, a group around you, even just finding one person to talk about this with can keep this on your radar when life just gets in the way, which it inevitably does. And what we found is that sharing an intention out loud, even with just one person, is a really incredible driver for actually supporting you to take those steps to to move your money towards things that are good for the planet and good for people rather than towards things that are destroying the the, the only home that we have <laughs>